I watched the first couple episodes of Swedish Sticks. I think it's hilarious. I'm very glad to see you in it. Thank you so much. How did this project come about to you? Um, well, about a year ago, I got an email from my manager uh, with a script attached to it, and it was forwarded with Peter's, with a letter from Peter Sturmer, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, okay, what is this? And he just wrote me this beautiful letter and said, I, you know, I have this project that I've been working on, and it's about these detectives in Los Angeles, and there's this female character in it that's very much a boss lady, and I can't imagine anyone but you playing this. Please, please, please read my script. And I'm a fan of his work, Peter's work. I, I think he's just such an, a brilliant actor. Um, and so I started reading the script and I was on the treadmill and I was walking and I stopped the treadmill because I didn't want to fall off. I laughed so hard. It's just, it was the, the first script that I read for Swedish Dicks was just really outside the box, really, really funny, outrageous lines. Um, just different than most things that come across your desk. What was the reaction like when you started telling people about the title of the show? People were just <laughs> so weird about it and so <laughs> shocked by it. And, and I remember the first tweet I sent and I hashtagged it, no, it's not a porno, because everybody's like, oh, Tracy, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, come on. And so it's become a running joke. It's, it's lost, like it's, it's it, the penis power has been lost on the show. Now we just make fun of it. It's like schlong. It's like long. It's like every way you can say dick. Um, it's been it's been amusing, but it's it's the experience itself has been incredible because it has been such a collaboration. Now I did a little Instagram stalking before I came here, <laughs> um, and wow. I saw all the, the pictures from set with you in the pinup clothing line that you have as well. Yes. What's it like been co incorporating that into the show and just the, the line in general? Mm. Um, so season one, you know, Jane was very, we were all sort of trying to figure out, you know, what the show was. Mm -hmm. um, and so we knew that she was a boss lady, we knew all these things, we had a very limited budget. I was quite honestly, you know, frustrated with the limitations because I just saw her differently than, you know, was necessarily, I, I couldn't make that happen at that point. And, and it was then that I really started thinking, I want to design for my character. I want to do this, and you know, that was has always been something that I've done for fun. Yeah. And I had um, I'd been higher. I've been I'd been shopping rather at uh, Pinup Girl Clothing for years, mm -hmm. um, and just wearing just different pieces and what have you. And I started stalking the CEO of of <laughs> Pinup Girl Clothing, Laura Burns, on Instagram, nice. and. Um, <laughs> Uh, I went into the store and her, her girls, her shop girls, all knew that it was me <laughs> and they all started texting and tweeting and what have you. And that's how our, our relationship first began. And then by the time Laura and I started working together and I started designing for, for Pinup Girl, because I have Tracy Lords, I'm part of Couture for Everybody. And you know, I'm very proud of that because we're all female owned mm -hmm. and it is, it, you know, female CEO, owner, uh, made in America, all those things that, that are really important. So, you know, being part of just this team of boss ladies is awesome. <laughs> and by the time season two happened, um, the pieces started happening and Laura and I worked, you know, with our, with the pattern cutter, Sherry, and we started really specifically cutting for Jane. So these pieces will come out, you know, for the fall, some of Jane's wardrobe and I've been wearing the suits and the stuff and it's been really powerful for me. So you've kind of dabbled in a little bit of everything. You know, I, I always have dabbled in a lot of things. For me, it just falls under the umbrella of just being an artist. Yeah. Whether you're painting, you're acting, you're directing, you're designing, those are just all different colors of the same beast. That's how I see it. I know other people don't necessarily. Mm -hmm. But for me, I mean, I grew up making outfits for my Barbie dolls. I think I probably would have ended up in design, uh, whether it was interior design or whatever. But then I started acting and my life went a different way and, mm -hmm. and stuff happened. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is just, you know, it's just part of the flow. And now you have the clothing line, the TV show, the movies, I the books, the, the music. Is yeah. there something you still want to do that you haven't really gotten the chance to yet? Well, I, I've started, you know, just branching out, other little sort of fingers of things, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, I think that they all feed into each other, but I definitely see myself, you know, just filmmaking. Um, I directed my first short 
um, you know, I'm more and more into writing. I'm going to do my first feature this year. Um, so yeah, I'm going to direct and I'm going to do some different things. And it's just really about you know seeing your vision. It's the same desire. Mm -hmm. Like, why do I want to design a, or help design a dress or create it? Because I want to see the final. I want my vision. Mm -hmm. So it's really about that. And, it's been good fun and you know then I'll start to do what Peter did and begging the actors to come and you know work with me as a director please, please. and I'll dress you nicely. Okay.